Why anyone would choose to paint an army full of humans when there's perfectly good orcs there is beyond me, but people do. So in this video, I wanted to take a look at painting all sorts of different skin tones. And if you have an army of humans, you might be looking to add a bit of variety and diversity amongst your troops. And one of the things I commonly see requested is how to paint darker skin tones. The good news is that it's no harder to paint than anything else really. And the first thing I wanna dive into is how to mix up your own skin tones using basic colors. This will help to give a more fundamental understanding of what those colors are made up of and then I want to show one paint that I think is really perfect for getting a huge variety of skin tones from light to dark with just the addition of white. Brown is interestingly enough just a darker or more desaturated orange or yellow. And because most skin tones fall on that brown beigey scale, we're going to mix some up. I first start with yellow, red, and a dark blue. In this case, I'm using Imperial Blue by Vallejo. First, we mix together yellow and red to get a nice orange. And then we're going to add blue to it, desaturating it. Going with a dark blue will help to darken our final mix, more so than a typical blue would, giving us a good starting point for a darker skin tone. As a side note, if you found that mixing yellow and red together to make orange is prone to creating something really desaturated, you're not alone. And while this is great for skin tones or more representational painting, if you're looking for something more punchy and saturated, try substituting your red for magenta. The truth is the yellow, red, blue color wheel we all learn as kids, well, it's really great as sort of introducing color theory and the fundamentals of mixing color. It produces really bland and desaturated secondary colors. So if you're looking for some more vivid mixes, try something closer to yellow, cyan, and magenta instead. And now that we have the basis of all of our skin tones, we're gonna actually be painting the eyes on all the head bits. I don't have a ton of standard human head bits, so had to get a little chaos -y for this demonstration. I mix NATO black and white to get a middle value gray and use it to paint all the eyeballs. I then add more NATO black to get a sort of off black and use it to paint the iris slash pupil on all the heads that aren't severed. I thought painting the eye before any of the skin would actually make my life easier, letting me kind of fix mistakes, but looking back, I kind of wish I followed my usual method and painted it after the first base coat of skin went on, ensuring that that whole eye area got decent coverage. Either way, after this I applied the first coat of paint to one of the heads, using that nice brown we mixed up. And once you have nice solid coverage, it's time to start mixing up some other colors using this as a base. You can see as I add pure white to the mix, it becomes more desaturated as it lightens. And often traditional portrait painters will avoid this. And then if I use my light pink, the additional red in it causes the mix to keep a nice amount of saturation as it lightens. Luckily though, both of these are usable, with the desaturated more purple color from the pure white making a nice base coat for a more fair-skinned individual amongst these grizzly trophies. Then I can use a lighter color that was created with that light pink and use it as a highlight picking out facial features and adding a bit of warmth and variance to the face. For the darker skin tone, I add light pink right to that original dark brown mix to create a nice highlight color which holds a bit more saturation, typical with a darker skin tone. It can be important to lean more red when mixing a darker skin tone, as if you don't, it'll read really yellow, sometimes almost green, and look really unnatural. Human beings also have a ton of color variants across our skin and faces. There's veins and capillaries and different skin thinnesses allowing those to show through as well as different parts of our body catching more rays of the sun. 
All of this adds up to a ton of nuance and little splashes of color. And without it, whatever you're painting can end up looking a little lifeless. And well, that's totally fine for these dead heads. If you feel like your skin tones are missing something, you can breathe a bit of life into them by using some nice colorful glazes. People with a more fair complexion can have a bit of purple or red around their eyes due to those veins and capillaries showing through. Well, someone with a darker, more olive skin tone might just have what looks like deeper pigmentation around their eyes. So on this guy, I took a bit of brown paint and added water to create a glaze and added just a tiny amount around the eyes to help give them definition. I also mixed up some orange similar to what we did for our skin tone and glazed that around the cheeks and brow ridge. The saturation of this gave the face a bit of flush, giving it some life and color variance. I also have another video that I'll link in the description where I go a little more in depth about adding color glazes to the face and also talk about why I didn't use a pure white for painting the eyes. And now that that pair of heads is wrapped up and we've mixed our own skin tone, you might be thinking to yourself, that was a lot of work for something like a tiny Warhammer head. Thankfully, there's also something really straightforward and easy we can do to get a variety of skin tones of all types. While messing around with my paints, I discovered that Vallejo Whole Red is actually kind of the perfect color for this. By itself, it's a great base for a darker skin tone, and then by adding white, it actually highlights up to some great colors suitable for a wide range of skin tones. And while there's a lot of great recipes out there for different types of skin tones, Usually they're only pertaining to one type or complexion of skin, requiring you to buy a couple different paint pots just for that purpose. And I think this is really exciting because it allows you to mix up a huge range of colors ranging from dark to light skin tones, all with just two paint colors, whole red and white. As you can see, as I go through and add more and more white, we get some pretty distinct skin tones. Here we have four super quick and easy colors, all made with just whole red and different amounts of white. The key to this is even though the tube of paint says bright white, by checking the pigments we can see that it actually is titanium white. Titanium white is an opaque and very pure white. It doesn't have any color. So when we mix it into a color, we're actually pulling that color mix closer to a gray desaturating it as we lighten it. This is really cool because instead of just one color getting incrementally lighter, every time we add white, we're creating a more desaturated and lighter color, making something completely unique with each color mix. And this is perfect for skin tones as darker ones tend to be more saturated, while lighter ones are more desaturated. With all that being said, we're going to add a little bit of imperial blue to our red and use that mix to paint the inside of the mouse and then get started painting all the skin. For the first head, I'm just going to start with an all over coat of Hall Red. For a highlight, I'm going to add a small amount of white, making sure we don't stray too far from the original color but have some contrast. When painting a darker skin tone, a lot of the volume is rendered with highlights as opposed to a lighter skin tone, which will also rely a lot on shadows. And we want to add highlights sparingly. If we add too much of the highlight color, we're going to end up changing what the overall color will read as, so we try and limit the areas that we highlight. Instead hitting just what we need to to give it form. So I'm going to pick out the bridge of the nose, brow ridge, chin, tips of the ears, and I'm also going to be hitting the cheekbones, sort of getting that Rembrandt triangle. For the next head, we're going to pick color mix number three from the gradient we made earlier with whole red and white, and use this as the base coat. I'm again going to add white as a highlight, but this time focus on more of the face hitting more of the overall cheek area, the entire top of the head, and then also the lower lip is always going to be a lighter value than the top lip, so making sure I get that as well. 
Also, I'm kind of churning through this for the sake of the demo, but it's really important to allow each step to dry fully because it's super easy to pick up a lot of unwanted texture when you're painting quickly, uh, especially on something as small as this. For the final head, I'm going to be using color mix number two as the base coat, applying it all over. This would be much easier over a lighter primer, but after a few coats, I got some decent coverage. For this Nurgle themed head, I'm going for something more pale, so I'm going to be using that last color mix number one as a highlight. As we get lighter in our skin tones, you can see that the area in which we're highlighting is also increasing in size, with this one actually being the majority of the final color, with the previous base coat left more for in the shadows. Due to this, I also mix in a little more white and pick out choice areas like the nose and brow, as well as all those Nurgle infected areas. For the teeth, I mix up a yellow gray using NATO black, yellow, and white. We're actually looking for something a bit lighter than the eye color, but also with a yellow tinge to it. I think these heads are really successful at showing off the variety of skin tones you can get with just this one color, hull red, and the addition of white. By starting off with something deep and saturated and then adding a true white, we can lighten and desaturate that color, giving us a huge range of colors and skin tones. This can also be tweaked by adding a little bit of red to the color mix or by using light pink instead of white like shown in the earlier segment of the video. And just like that part, we can also add some colorful glazes to help give these faces a bunch of color variety. You can see the difference in how saturation works with a light skin tone when I apply that same orange glaze to this pale head. It's way too saturated, so instead I add a tiny smidge of blue to it to mellow it out, and then reapply my final skin tone highlight to pick out details. Also, since this guy is of the Nurgle variety, I use a purple glaze to give him a sickly appearance and a more pronounced chaos infused look, reapplying the skin tones where needed. It's also super important to remember that this isn't an end all be all recipe or the only way to do things. There's really no one size fits all when it comes to people. And although this recipe is great at capturing a huge range of skin tones, there's still a ton of nuance and individuality that is gonna be missed. So. It's really important to experiment and check out different color mixes. I did the same thing to a couple browns and you can see the results here. Each one having its own nuances that might be appropriate for what you're looking for. That being said, I am super proud of how this all turned out and I think it's super cool that you could paint up a really diverse squad or army of miniatures all without having to buy a ton of different paint pots. Hopefully after watching this video, you feel super equipped to mix up your own skin tones or be able to tackle a variety of different ones with only two paints. Thanks for watching.